Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Linux edition of the news, and we'll talk about the Linuxy type stuff that was interesting to us as we carry on through. You can catch the show live Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See the whole thing, comments in between, and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and dive right on in. We finally have a nice user-friendly tool to manage System D. It took long enough. Uh, it's not like a, a perfect GUI application. But it does give you the ability to look at the different services, reorder, toggle them on, toggle them off. This is called ISD. Um, just don't call it IDE. You know, that'd be kind of, uh, might blow up your system. But this is ISD. So it's a um, simple management system allowing you to use the keyboard and make some adjustments here. So here's some of the some of what you see. So when you pull it up, you can see from this that it's, uh, it's a terminal-based application, but it's going to list all of the various elements. So here's uh, the SSH elements. You can see what is there, and you can see the active ones. You can see, um, so the green ones are active ones, and the gray ones are probably the uh, inactive ones. So uh, let's see, loaded. Um, Oh, the, the darker ones are actually disabled. Uh, the green ones are enabled, and they're not telling me specifically about the gray ones there. But uh, you can see that you can see a lot of the different services, and then you can move things around. You can toggle stuff on or off. So you can, uh, this is, you can run, uh, this is if you are in a terminal, right, and you need to restart the system, you can go ahead and do that. If you've done like web server type things, you're familiar with those particular controls there. But this does give you the uh, the nice ability to get in here and toggle services on or off or or things like that. So you know, in this case here, if you don't need Bluetooth at all, you can go ahead and you can edit it, you can disable it, you can just do a lot of the variety of things. So that's a, a nice new uh, application available. Uh, so if uh, you go try it, if you're an Arch user, it is available in the uh, Arch user repository repositories. For others, it's available as an app image, which requires a graphical desktop environment to run on. Okay. So um, there is uh, some options for that. We see the code freeze for Debian 13 is beginning in March. This is, of course, a slow rollout. And then we have Debian 15. The code name is revealed. That is Duke. So here we have um, inside of the freeze, we have the milestone one, which is the transition and tool, tool chain freeze is in um, <clears throat> March 15th. Then they have a soft freeze April 15th, just in time to pay your taxes. Then we have a hard freeze May 15th. And they say the date for the full freeze milestone four will be announced in due course. I, I'm just going to go on a limb and say June 15th. I mean, <laughs> kind of follows, you know. I don't know. But uh, that's what we have over there. They, they explain down here the soft freezes. Uh, these don't mean that there can't be anything added. It's just there's a lot more, uh, a lot more scrutiny of what is added. Uh, and then they have the harder freeze and the full freezes. The, the, mostly there's no automatic migrations. Everything has to be manually reviewed. So there is, uh, they're queuing up for Debian release. Uh, so according to the article here, looking at how the freezes go, they're probably looking at next summer for the release. So actually, no, I'm sorry. Uh, 2029, Duke 2029. So yes, the uh, 15 would be 2029. The, uh, let's see, Trixie, let's see. So reveal the release of Trixie and Forky expected in mid 2027. There you go. So there is what we have as far as uh, when these are expected out. However, before you flock too quickly to Debian, uh, Debian has shown a few more of the more uh, wokey type trends in these things. Uh, so this was met with a lot of criticism, even in the, uh, the Debian community. But they're like, we're ditching X because it's been a place of vile hatred. I'm not sure if these people have been on Mastodon, but it's just as bad. Um, in fact, if you want to talk about, about uh, hateful rhetoric and things like that, you know, the uh, uh, the developer of elementary whom, you know, I, as I look at these different uh, these different distros, I don't really pay much attention to who's creating what. It's just a quirk of my personality. I kind of go into these things blind. I look at them from a technical perspective, not who's does it. I know nothing about Danielle. And like it was like a year or so before 
uh, I even knew who Danielle was. Danielle was posting on Mastodon that me and Brian Lunduke would probably be the ones responsible if something had happened to that person. I don't even know who the hell that person is. Okay, that is toxic stuff. I had nothing to do with that. That would be these people that are leaving X because X is allegedly toxic. I have no earthly idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Literally, I have no earthly idea what you're talking about. All right. Now, believe it or not, I'm not into drama. And there's a reason I'm not into drama because I was raised in a family of gossip. And it's just, it was just one of those sins I cannot tolerate these days. Ugh. I don't want gossip. I don't want drama. Um, and so it's, it's insane, but, uh, these people are crazy. So anyway, this comes on Debian's micro news. Debian publicity team will no longer post on X slash Twitter. We took this, uh, we took this decision since we feel X doesn't reflect Debian's shared values as stated in our social contract code of contact and diversity statement. X evolved in a place where people we care about don't feel safe and you are invited to follow us instead over on these places that nobody really watches so there you go uh this might be the beginning of the descent of debian into uh the dustbin of linux history and so uh the reasoning is not being aligned with these issues the problem is is that there is nothing on x that is horribly bad on any of these people uh, because you do not like what somebody says that is not reason to not be there. And we're not talking about being on X because you agree with everybody that's there. You're on X because that's where people are. Okay. I get over there and I'll post when I have videos and then I scroll through the timeline for five minutes and I will repost, which is why I hate Deepin. I can't, I do not think Deepin is a good distribution, but every time Deepin has some technical release, we have a new version, we're testing a new feature, I retweet it to my audience because somebody in my audience probably likes Deepin. If not the distribution, the desktop environment. I don't know. I don't really care. If you post your announcement and I see it on your distro, I'm probably going to retweet it. <laughs> So all this is going to do is cause people to do what happened to Ubuntu. People start forgetting about it and then it falls in the history. But then the other thing that they're doing is if this is all the people we're working with, then you start alienating very good, very qualified people from the project. And then you're left with just a whole bunch of people that don't know anything about code. They're just screaming around with their blue hair about how the whole world hates them. It's crazy. It's insane. So that's what Debian is up to. Um, there was actually a longer uh, commit to this that was, they ended up deleting. And a lot of the people on the Debian team is not on board with this. And uh, there was some discussion on our Matrix server. If you're not over there, uh, you can search up our, our room on Matrix. Uh, it switched to Linux. You can jump on over there. Uh, they were having a discussion over there the other day that um, so OpenSUSE was looking for a new director, but they can't find anybody because they've alienated everybody. They've alienated everybody who knows how to do the job and is competent at it. It's insane. So Debian is uh, up to their same old nonsense, which is very sad because it's such a good distribution. I want Debian to succeed, but they have got to push these activists aside and say, look, I don't care. See, there was a time when you discussed who you enjoyed going to bed with or what type of proclivities you had. It was called harassment and you would get written up for it at work nobody cares and if you just sit there embracing all of this when we're supposed to be talking about a linux distribution you alienate people away and they go off to one of the 35 other distributions and they'll all circle around one and make that one the better. And then you will fall to history and then everyone's going to look and go, whatever happened to Debian? Well, a bunch of unqualified, screaming, whiny babies got over there and alienated everybody that knew what the hell they were doing. That's the stuff that we got to stop. You got to go back to the people. Okay, if you're like, well, I, but I, I, I need to be represented. Be a good coder and you will be because nobody gives a crap who you go to bed with. That's the point. Well, Ubuntu, speaking of Matrix, uh, Ubuntu is 
uh, depreciating their IRC channels uh, or deprecating, I guess. Um, they are getting rid of their IRC channels, switching over to Matrix, making yet another distribution. Of course, Linux Mint did this, mostly because Hex Chat was uh, no longer being maintained, and they looked everything over and said there's not really another good intuitive uh, chat system they could put in. And so what Linux Mint did is they got rid of Hex Chat because it's not being maintained, and all they did is they did a, uh, a web app for matrix that's already pre-programmed into the help channel of uh, of Linux Mint. So you can boot that up from Linux Mint in the newer versions as of 22, and you can then go over and get all the support you need over on Matrix. Well, Ubuntu's look at this goes, you know, fewer and fewer people are using IRC. A lot of people are using Matrix. Uh, it's not as decentralized as it could be, but it's definitely a step up from Discord. And so they're switching over to this for their uh, for their chat and their help and real-time communication. So if uh, you were looking for more reasons on Matrix and you want to contribute into Debian, or excuse me, into Ubuntu, that's a place to do it. And once again, if you're on Matrix, we have our room over there where it switched to Linux. On to our last story, there is a new player in the Linux phone world. I don't know if we will get a good solid Linux phone yet, but this phone looks very promising. Hopefully it's not overwhelmingly expensive. But uh, this is a new company. They are still in development. And so they are at Librix Next. So it is a new Linux phone. This features an 8-core CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, 2 terabytes of storage, and zero data tracking. You see the picture here. These are toggle switches on the top. You can turn on or off your, your various radios and uh, microphones and cameras and things like that with physical hard toggle switches. So, um, of course, the, the problem we have with Linux phones right now is we have the Pine phones, which are so low spec. I think that the development is stalled because we don't have a good Pine phone, which is unfortunate because I really, really want to see development for Pine phone going. I would love to run a Pine phone if it were solid in product in, um, <clears throat> production and and if it had a battery capacity literally just trying to turn mine on the other day i ran the battery down 30 percent just trying to just rebooting the thing trying to get it to boot off of the card instead of internal uh internal chip 30 percent of the battery went in just rebooting the system like five times and and then when you do get it running it's so slow it's like it's not a usable device and the, the Pro is not a lot better. What if we actually had higher spec Pine phones, we could get more development. The problem is it's this weird catch 22 because we're not going to have higher spec Pine phones until there's a market for them. There's going to be a market for them until there's software for them. And so since they're not developing the software internally, there's really no motivation. I think Pine phone, unfortunately, is going to die. I don't want it to die. I want it to jump up and be successful, I, I just don't see it. And then, of course, you have <clears throat> the Librem phone, which every person I know in private conversation who has worked with this company, his says, stay away from him. Uh, it's Purism, uh, which they still haven't produced a solid uh, workable phone for the masses. Many of the people who had paid their money in for them never received their, their devices. And then you couldn't get your money back. So it was basically like a Ponzi scheme. You guys order your pre-order. We're going to use those funds to fulfill these pre-orders and we don't have any cash left. That's kind of a Ponzi scheme. I don't know about that. So I don't know. Maybe the third one's a charm. This one looks promising, but again, if the specs are, or if the cost is too high, that's crazy. But what these guys have in place is they are developing a mobile software for the phone as well. And so they're kind of taking that purism approach where Purism, if they had a product, it would probably be better because the phone and the software are developed simultaneously. They're doing the same approach, although I believe you can load other distributions on it as well, but they are building their own system 
focusing on convergence. The idea is you can take this device, you can dock it into a computer monitor, plug in everything that you need and have a full working computer as well. And so uh, here's actually a closer up of the of these uh, pictures here. So there are three toggle switches. This one looks like uh, wireless. Um, this one is Bluetooth and this one is cameras and microphones. I thought they had reference to a few more there as well. So you can actually pick up uh, the, you can't pick them up now. They are a company that is in development and you can go over to their site, which should have been in here. I should have actually had it. There it is the very bottom. You can go over to their site. <clears throat> and when you get into their site, if I can get their site loaded, uh, you can actually hit the join our crowdfunding, and this is going to load up a contact form. And so you can send to your contact form, and then uh, they will get back in, in contact with you and you know, do whatever they're doing. It looks like they are out of Madrid, it looks like. So will we have a uh, finally have a good, solid Linux phone or not? Mm, I hope so, but I don't know. If you want to help support the channel, we do have a subscribe star page. I excuse me, um, locals page. I'm not sure why I said subscribe star. Well, because I put the subscribe star logo up. I'm sorry. That's why. <laughs> I have subscribe star too. Subscribestar.com slash switch to Linux. I was meant to feature the uh, locals page, though. My apologies. Uh, <laughs> My brain's not working, apparently. There you go. Uh, switch to Linux.locals.com. We did release our uh, our um, uh, last short story. I think you have 15 more days to download the audiobook for that. Uh, hopefully, we will get the next one in. My urgent business in California uh, beckons, but I will try and uh, get another short story into the workflow uh, for this season. But uh, you can have a look over there. And then, of course, we will... Uh, have the um, the hangouts, which we haven't done a Thursday live show in a while, but we have, have done hangouts, I believe, every week uh, that we've missed the live show. But uh, with that, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.